by 2014, 2015, you knew Jeffrey was wildly popular in music. Is that fair to say? Since I've been knowing that he'd been popular. And he was also popular, if you know, if you observed it in fashion, meaning uh, like dress. Yeah. Social media, he had influence. Yeah. And he was owning several homes, to your knowledge, true? I don't know what he owned. Okay, how about cars? He had several cars? Yeah. And he would allow people to use those cars. He was free with that stuff, right? Yeah. And um, he would rent cars for other people too, even if he didn't own it. Is that true? I don't know what he'd do for other people, but there was no issue. He rented cars for you. Fair. Huh? He rented cars for you if you needed it. Isn't that true? What do you mean? You would drive at times a rental car with permission of Jeffrey Williams that he rented. It wasn't a big deal, right? I used to just go get the car. Yeah. Okay. And and it wasn't only you. It was anybody. He was he's generous, right? With his with his things. Sustain. You can rephrase. It's fine. All right. You also knew at that time, 2014, 2015, Jeffrey would fly on uh, private planes. True. Yeah. And he would allow you at times. I don't know the number, you could tell the jurors, to go on a private plane with him, fair to say? Yeah. And um, he w you knew he was touring America at that time, right? He was performing all the time, right? Yeah, he was, yeah. And he would do tours throughout America, you're aware of that? He used to go to, I don't know what tour is, but he used to go to the different clubs and stuff. Okay. And do you remember him having, like, go to different cities throughout America? I mean, this is what I need to say. That's fine. And he, Europe, um, countries like um, England and um, France. And Sustained. Jeffrey would, would play in other places, not, not in America, outside America. You're aware of that, right? What's the relevance? The so relevance is that um, Mr. Copeland's telling the police that Jeffrey Williams cared about a window. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you say that again. Jeffrey Williams cared about a car window. The man is... A okay, I'm, <coughs> I'm not sure the one has much to do with the other, so I'm going to sustain that objection. When you told the police that this is about a window... Jeffrey's window, remember what we just heard? That was part of your finesse, right? To get you out of there. When the police were questioning, my only motive was to get me out of the interrogation room free. I was trying to say whatever I can to get them to let me go, to convince them that I would help them. And this just, is just my motive. Every time they got me, that's what I was trying to do. They were bringing his name up, and they mentioned anybody's name I was going to make up a story on them. I was going to say something about them, hoping that I can convince them to let me go. And that's what happened here about the windshields, right? Same thing. <clears throat> I don't remember what I told them. Well, I just played it. I heard what I said. That was part of your, your attempt to go home, right? True? Not to be locked up. Right. Did anybody come to you from the police, the district attorney's office, and say, we corroborated, means support or verified, this, um, this car window story? Did they ever tell you that? After 2000, in, when I, I gave an interview and went to the feds. I haven't heard anything from the state, the police, or not until they kicked me in the street. They haven't told me about 
met any. They haven't reached out to me or none. Okay. I'd like to go to the next issue that I'd like to discuss with you, Mr. Copeland. It's JW240H as in happy. States exhibit number 378YE as in Aaron. It's again the June 10th, 2015 interrogation. It's at 1042.23 a.m. through 1042.32 a.m. And I'd like you to listen for and tell us if I am wrong where um, this is outside of Club Crucial after you, remember you got into that fight on January 6th, 2015. Remember with the lip and the eye and the knot on the head? Remember that? And when nothing went wrong, my lip, it was just my eye. Okay. Um, and it was uh, the detective said to you, okay, we'll get back to see you. Nine, he's standing there with bloody Jay. You said so, but thug pulling my shirt like, there goes bloody Jay right there. You know what I mean? Thug and Nard were in the car leaving Crucial that night and firing at either Bloody J or Kell's people. Tell me if you hear that, okay? Okay, we back to you see 90 standing there with Bloody J. Not again. So, but throw him, put him a shirt like, they're going to play a day right there, yeah, I mean. Yeah. So. You hear that? Yeah, I heard. Okay. Did um, law enforcement do you remember Club Crucial back in 2014, 2015? You used to go there every Monday night, right? Right. Approximately every Monday night. And No, every Monday. Okay. And do you remember yeah. ever observing or seeing that there were surveillance cameras inside and outside Club Crucial? Yeah, there were cameras. Okay. Did the police ever come to you and say, hey, we have the – surveillance camera we want you to look at or the district attorney's office from January 6, 2015. Did, did everyone ever show you anything like that? I never heard nothing about no cameras. Okay. I'm going to play on the same issue, same time dealing with outside of Club Crucial. Um, this is going to be J. W. Jeffrey Williams 240I as an ice cream states exhibit number 378YE, it's June 10, 2015, interrogation, 1043.20 a.m. to 1044.18 a.m. And this is you, just make sure it's right. So when we pulled out, Thug and Nard got in the car together. I mean, so when they pulled out, we, we leave. But when we're leaving, Thug and them pull on a side street. I see them pull on a side street. My pulled on the side. He like... What the H-E-L-L y'all doing? He like, boy, we want to wait. He come out the club. I'm like, who? He's talking about Bloody J. What the H-E-L-L? You know what I mean? I said, I hear the gun cock back. Detective asked, what had a gun? You said that N Nard. Detective said, uh-huh. You said, so I hear the gun cock back. I'm like, what the F? So I tell them. All right, all right. I mean, my brother was going to have to turn around. Detective says, uh-huh. So you said, so when we go down and turn around and come back, I'm telling brother, S-H-I blank, just let's, excuse me, ju just go left. And we just ride the back street all the way to the house. We just hear the S-H-I blank go boom, boom, boom. And we just see the car thug and them in chasing the other car in front of them. You know what I mean? Detective said, that is the night, the same night you got jumped on at the club? You said, yeah, thug and them chasing them. Because at first they thought they took money from them. Just listen to it, make sure I said that fairly accurately. We pulled out. I mean, so we pulled out thug and them. So they pulled out. Sweet me deep. But when he did, I threw him across the street. So I threw him across the street. My brother pulled on the side. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know it. Yeah, but we don't really need to climb the club. I'm like, 
Mr. Copeland? Yeah, I heard. Was it fair what I said? What you mean? What I said was that um, what you what you said. Did I take it? Did I take your words and the detective's words accurately? What I said beforehand. I guess. Um, did the police, local police, gang unit, federal authorities, district attorney's office, anybody, ever come to you with any type of verification of what you said. Did they ever say to you, yeah, this happened or this didn't happen? Did that ever, did they ever even talk to you about that? No. 